How's it going, everybody? This is Coach Bronson here, and today we are going to talk about the number one piece of equipment you must have in your home gym. This is the best piece of equipment. It's the most versatile piece of equipment, and it will give you the entire variety of what you need to do to improve your metabolism, build strength, burn fat, and increase the effectiveness of your workouts. Before we get started with that, I want to make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell every, so you're notified every time I come out with a new video. But most importantly, share this information. The more people we can get this info out to, the more people we can help improve the quality of life. And that's good and that's better for everybody. Okay. So what is the number one piece of equipment that you should have in your home gym? Well, before we answer that question, we need to talk about what the whole purpose of um, equipment is, right? It's to help us provide a stimulus, to help us grow muscle, to help us learn how to move our body and control our joints. There's 10 components of fitness, and there are seven essential movements that we talk about when we exercise and we, we implement a fitness program, okay? When we're working at home, we don't have a lot of space often. We often don't have a lot of choices of equipment. So we want to make the biggest bang for our dollar to get the most out of every single thing that we add to the equipment we have available, okay? So when we're talking about the seven essential movements, okay? We've talked about this before. It's squatting, lunging, hinging, that's bending over, okay? Then we have pushing, pulling, carrying stuff or walking, and then twisting our body. Those are the seven things that our body does uh, that we do that are functional movements, okay? Then when we have all of the aspects of fitness, okay, things like strength and endurance and stamina, we have to be able to put workouts together and have equipment that's versatile so that it allows us to develop different things with our fitness so we're not doing the same thing all the time. I can't always work strength. Sometimes I need to work endurance. I can't always work on flexibility. Sometimes I need to work on agility or coordination or improve my balance, okay? And all that stuff combined into... Uh, the, com the, the millions of combinations of things that you can do, if you could have one piece of equipment that allowed you to put all sorts of different things together, that would absolutely benefit your ability to sustain uh, a long-term fitness program, okay? So what is that one piece of equipment? We're going to talk about that, and we're going to go over where it fits, particularly in the different aspects of uh, essential movements and some of the aspects of fitness, okay? So the number one thing that I recommend everybody get uh, to, to add to your home workout equipment is a kettlebell. A kettlebell is the most versatile piece of equipment that you can get. It allows you to do many of the things that you can do with a barbell. It allows you to do all of the things you can do with a dumbbell. You can do things that you can do with a kettlebell. You can't do with resistance bands. Uh, they're literally everything that you can do just about with any other sort of weight option you can do with a kettlebell. Okay. It allows you to add uh, dynamic movement, strength movement, repetitions and volume of working with resistance so that you can get a broad range of all of the components of fitness and there are things that you can do for every single essential movement. Every set, every single seven essential movements you can do with a kettlebell. Let's talk about some of those, okay? So the first thing we have in our essential movements is squatting, okay? You can do all sorts of things with a kettlebell. Just for example, you can do a goblet squat, okay? There are other types of squats that you can do. The idea is that you're holding the weight. You're providing additional resistance. It's more, it's heavier than a, an air squat. Um, and you can do a lot of different things with one, one kettlebell in a goblet, two kettlebells on your shoulders, kettlebells holding at your sides. There's a lot of things you can do. Goblet squat is a perfect example of the squatting motion as an essential movement using a kettlebell. The second movement we have in our essential movements that you can do with a kettlebell is lunging. Okay. Just like a, uh, just like a goblet squat, you can hold the kettlebell in front and you can lunge. You can lunge in place. You can walk around your room. You can do reverse lunges. There's a lot of different ways that you can do lunges using the kettlebell to add weight, okay? You can hold it on one side. You can hold it on the other side. You can hold them together. You can hold one kettlebell on each arm, however you want to do it. It adds a variety and a level of function to what we call unilateral training, one side at a time. That's what lunging is all about, okay? Works on balance and coordination and all that stuff. 
Okay. The third thing that you can do with kettlebells is deadlifts. This works on your back strength, your shoulder strength, your grip strength. It works on what we call your posterior chain. So hinging at the waist, learning how to control your hip movement while keeping your back secure and not throwing out your back. Okay. Uh, it's a great thing that you can do. Again, you can do one arm at a time. You can do wide stance. You can do close stance. You can do uh, heavy, light. You can do it for reps. There's all sorts of things you can do with kettlebells and hinging movements. Okay. The fourth one we have is pushing. There are dozens of different ways that you can use kettlebells to help with learning how to push and getting stronger in pushing motion. Okay. You can do bench press just like you would with a dumbbell or a barbell. You can do overhead press. Thrusters is a great example of getting a full body movement included with pressing overhead. Okay. So it's a full squat. You have the kettlebells on your shoulders and then you press overhead as you stand up. It's a great way to get coordination, work on some energy utilization. We talk about metabolic pathways. Thrusters will get your heart rate up. It's a great thing to throw into a conditioning workout as you're also improving shoulder strength and pressing movements, okay? Then the fifth one that we have is pulling. So we have pushing. We also need to learn how to pull, okay? So what you can do with kettlebells and pulling is what we call a bent over row. Now, there are other things that you can do, the, uh, kettlebell drags, and there's some things that you can, variations of rowing and pulling with a kettlebell that are, that simulate that pulling motion, work in the shoulders, work in the biceps, doing all sorts of things. You can do curls with them. There's a lot of the pulling muscles that you can use with kettlebells. The idea is keeping your elbow tight, keeping your shoulder locked, and you're pulling literally just as if you were pulling a rope pulling your, your dog, whatever it may be, pulling something towards you, okay? So that is another essential movement, the, the ability to pull things. Carrying stuff, being able to walk with weight is a fantastic skill and fantastic uh, stimulus that you can do with kettlebells. A lot of people walk. If you want to kick that up and, and progress your ability to do things, progress your strength, progress your metabolism, progress the effectiveness of the times that you are actually walking. Because now you can say, not only am I walking, but I'm also doing it against resistance or carrying something. Okay. Then you can help build muscle while you're walking. It's a great way to take your walking to the next level. You can do farmer's carries. That's probably the most common way that you can add kettlebells to a walking workout. Just get something heavy in both hands and walk as long as you can. If you need to take a break, you put them down, take a break, pick them back up and carry them again. You can do one arm at a time. You can carry it here, one arm in front, two arms on your shoulders. There's so many different variations and ways that you can carry weight while you walk that will benefit not just your cardiovascular endurance and stamina, but also help you build muscle while you're doing it, okay? And then the last way is twisting. Twisting has a lot of different components to it. The idea is that we want to be able to move our body, okay, in a twisting motion, okay, without hurting ourselves. We don't want to twist our spine and lose control and, and, and just throw ourselves all over the place and cause injury, okay? So having that core control, because remember, core is our abs, it's our sides, it's our back. All of the stuff in our torso, front, round, and sideways, 360 degrees is considered our core. So anything that we can do to work on keeping our core tight or giving it strength and range of motion as we turn or do things sideways or in weird positions, things like that, is going to help us perform better. It's going to help us stay safe and reduce our risk of injury. Okay. So one of the, the common things that you can do with a kettlebell is called a kettlebell windmill. You're holding weight over your head. Even if you don't use the kettlebell at first, you can practice with just an empty hand, okay? But eventually you're gonna get to where you wanna hold some weight. You can use a kettlebell and it helps you learn how to bend and control your body as you twist and do things in multiple directions kind of at the same time, okay? So that's the seven essential movements and it's just seven examples of exercises you can do with a kettlebell that will help you improve and get better in all seven movements, okay? Goblet squats, goblet lunges, suitcase carries or kettlebell deadlifts, sorry, kettlebell deadlifts, kettlebell suitcase deadlifts, kettlebell thrusters, bent over rows, 
farmers carries or any variation of carrying something and windmills. Okay. Seven exercises, seven essential movements, kettlebells can work for all of them. Okay. Now here's the cool thing about kettlebells is they allow you to do some things that other weights don't allow you to do with a little more control, a little easier to learn them because there it's one thing, it's one weight. It's you can learn how to use it. You can take your time. It scales well and you can progressively improve. And that is what we call dynamic movement. So dynamic movement is a way to work on strength. It's resistance training, but it also helps you work on control, speed, and develop power as well. So it gives you a, an additional range of some of the components of fitness that you may not be able to get as easily with barbells or things that are a little bit more complicated to learn. Okay. So an example of some things that are dynamic movement that you can learn with a kettlebell, kettlebell swings. Okay. Learning how to engage your hips and move quickly through the, the, the hips, through the, that power transfer into the shoulders. Kettlebell snatch is another one. That's a single arm movement where you're pulling the kettlebell from the floor up overhead. So you're it's full body engagement with shoulder mobility, shoulder uh, stability in the overhead position, as well as hip engagement, just similar to the kettlebell swing. Around the worlds is a good core engagement, grip work and controlling that kettlebell as it goes around your body in a circle. And then kettlebell drags is really good core activation, shoulder work, um, stamina and endurance, as well as pulling. And we're going to get into this next asymmetric unilateral work because you're pulling with one arm at a time, one arm at a time. You have to control and stabilize that center line so your body doesn't get off balance. So it's balance and coordination at the same time as working, pulling in all of these other things, okay? So some additional exercises you can do that add a dynamic component to your routine and give you some more variation with kettlebells, kettlebell swings, kettlebell snatch, around the worlds, and kettlebell drags, okay? Some awesome things to try. If you've never tried those before, definitely try it. Uh, play around with them. There's gonna be videos for all of these exercises in the description, so make sure you check those out and see how you do with them, okay? Now, the last thing, the really cool part about this is we get to play around with kettlebells a little bit because they're what I like to call asymmetrical. They're not the same size and shape like a dumbbell or a barbell with weight, right? Barbell has the same weights on each side. It's a bar. Everything's balanced. With a kettlebell, it's not balanced. You've got a weight. you got a handle. You can't always hold it in a way that's comfortable. So you can do what we call odd object work where you have to learn how to hold something in a weird way, put your body in a position that's not standard, okay, and get used to and understand how to control your body in ways that are unpredictable because life is unpredictable, all right? One of my favorite things to do, two exercises that I really like to do with the kettlebell that are uh, odd object or asymmetrical or kind of make you work in a different way are baby carries. That's holding the kettlebell and hugging it like you're hugging a baby and you're carrying it. Okay. You hold it in here. It's making you work your back and your arms. You can do one arm. You can do two arms, however you want to do it, but holding that kettlebell up in your chest. Okay. And carrying it awkwardly. That's one thing. I really like doing that. It's a great way to walk. It's a great way to work your upper back and shoulders, and it makes you work things differently than you normally would doing a standard exercise. Okay. Another one is bottoms up kettlebell carries okay holding the kettlebell in front of you and with the kettlebell upside down is forcing you to work on shoulder stability and manage that weight while you're walking so you're moving and you're trying not to let the kettlebell move so this is what we call anti uh resistance work so it's not pushing it's not pulling it's not actively trying to move weight you're trying to keep the weight from moving so you're trying to manage the weight the resistance comes in from, don't, from not letting the weight do what it wants to do because you're moving around, okay? That's a great way to work on shoulder stability. It's great core work. It's great unilateral one arm at a time, all sorts of things and fun you can have with that. So play around with all these exercises, guys. You got seven exercises for seven essential movements, giving you four exercises for dynamic movements, and I've given you two exercises for asymmetrical odd object work that you can do all with a kettlebell because the kettlebell is the most versatile piece of equipment and you need to have some in your home gym. Hope this information was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.